Hey guys and welcome to another Redstone Contraption video and today I'm going to show you this five digit uh, combo lock which has decimal input and reset as a button a uh, very quick to access um, yeah a user for interface and yeah also yeah pretty easy to build up in survival the reason why I did this is actually um, I usually don't do this as redstone builds very often but in this case um, I got mock miner you know the new uh, uh, guy at Mojang who will work for the render engine uh, on Skype and he actually recently asked me how would I do such a combo lock and well I explained him my ideas behind it and then just actually thought about why not just trying it out and see whether that works what I had in mind and after an hour I got my first prototype over there and well I eventually developed it a little bit and um, these are cloned by the new clone command in 1.8 snapshots by the way so that helps really a lot when building this stuff here that you can easily change and modify things and save the current progress in case it doesn't work out <laughs> and so on but anyway um, after two or, two or three more hours I got it uh, a lot more compact and then I uh, just uh, decided I would like to have one fancy version of the whole building and one naked version. And for the fancy version, I got some help for designing this uh, by uh, Mary the Lapis Demon, a uh, YouTuber. And um, yeah, so so we came up with this design together, and it looks pretty fancy in my opinion. But anyway, let's go uh, to the mechanics of the build. So first of all, let's demonstrate how it's working. Uh, the current combo which is set here is 85,710. That's the current number of subscribers I have and yeah, thanks again for all, all the people who are watching my videos. It's absolutely mind-blowing how many people actually watch my content despite me uploading stuff so irregularly. And so what happens when you enter the right number? Well, you can hear that we currently have to reset the thing because I forgot that last time. Okay, so the first digit, uh, or always the digit which we are entering, is the one which is uh, lit up. So we are entering the first digit, and you hear a low and a high pitched uh, note block beep. In this case, there is the high pitched beep indicating that you entered the right number. You can obviously remove that in case you don't want to give uh, some uh, someone else the chance to easily figure out your password, because in this case, obviously, there are only actually 50 possible configurations you need to test before you can enter the whole password if you always hear the sound when you're already entering one digit, whether it's correct or not. Anyway, so 85,710. And the last uh, digit, when it opens, uh, when it's entered correctly, gives you another uh, three note block beep and opens the door. Well, in the inside here, uh, we just got some uh, fancy things. And on the back here, there is the chest array. And for some reason, everything's there. And this array here, yeah, just is for setting the actual combo lock. So over here we got a conversion table and it tells you how many items you need to put into the chest to uh, set the respective number. So let's take a look. First one was it was an 8, so there should be 8 items in this chest and there are ex exactly 8 wooden shovels. Obviously it needs to be unstackable items, otherwise you would have to have 8 stacks of items. Yeah, and so you can just look up the conversion table and put the um, yeah, right amount of uh, shovels into the chest here. And therefore set the combo, it's really easy. And what happens if you want to be alone in this room? Well, just press the reset button and uh, then the whole combo lock has been reset. It has to be entered again and the door closes. And if you want to get out in the meantime, you can shortly open the door for a few seconds by pressing this additional open door button. And now the combo lock has been reset. So if you enter any other number, nothing happens. And we don't even get the high pitched note block. And uh, if you actually enter all five numbers, it usually resets itself. Um, er, as well after a while so you can see uh, that it automatically detected that you entered the wrong number um, and uh, well you can always override and at any time of the uh, entering process if you mistyped something and press the reset button and yeah it will cycle through all the, all the lights and then go back to the default state so now you might be wondering how is this being built. Um, I'm giving you the world download for this and it's not really that complicated to build up. It's actually pretty simple, but I want to quickly go over the features here. So I won't make a full blown tutorial, but uh, so that you understand the principle and uh, you can look up, uh, as I said, you can look up the whole build on the world file. Um, so the idea behind is that we are saving what number we are entering in those memory cells. Let me just build up one of these uh, with a comparator and an ordinary stone block and some redstone dust and torch maybe to trigger the whole thing. So um, we got these kinds of memory cells here 
And they have the property that they can actually save all 15 different states of redstone. Because the comparators will just keep themselves powered, but only with the redstone line uh, level you're powering them with. So if I cut this torch now, it's not redstone level 15. I can actually get this to level 15. Now you see the uh, red uh, redstone dot is actually lighting up even more. And that means that we can uh, easily save. We could even try to save hexadecimal numbers, but in this case, we're just trying to uh, save decimal numbers uh, into these memory cells. So what we are doing is, I just got a line of redstone behind the buttons here. And since they are one block apart, uh, that means that this redstone line here will get a different power level depending on what button we actually press. This button and this power level is getting distributed over to all memory cells with these com uh, comparators. And, well, there is this lapis block in uh, being p triggered by a piston and only if uh, the current state, let's press the reset button again so that you can see what's what I mean. So, uh, if the lamp number one is lit up, that means that um, the first piston here is extended so that this um, memory cell can actually be set. You can see it over here, there's also this uh, node block with the low sound, which uh, indicates that we actually set this memory cell here. And the others are not connected to this, so that means that we're only setting the first one. So if we cycle through the button here, uh, uh, by or by entering any number, we also at the same time trigger this piston here, which will cycle this uh, chain of repeater locks uh, to the next one so that we will actually uh, now yeah, just move the next piston down and this one up again. So if you take a look here, you can see that the signal moves one block further from this repeater to the next one. Okay, let's just enter a one. So now we are locking the second uh, repeater here and the second piston is extended. And when we enter a number now, we will actually enter it into the second memory cell and so on and so forth. So we will cycle through all of them. And eventually um, after we hit the fourth one, if I'm hitting the fi fifth one now, it's gonna reset automatically, so I'm not doing that at the moment. Uh, but you might be able to tell, it's a little bit hard to see, that those um, yeah, uh, memory cells now have all different redstone levels because I entered uh, different numbers. And now the question is, how do I read them out and only trigger the door if the correct number is being set? Well, let's be done with the second part here. And what I'm actually doing is, I got an AND gate, a very simple AND gate behind this memory cell. So let's assume that the output of the memory cell is just this hopper here, which is easier to set than the memory cell. I can just put a certain amount of item redstone items in it. Then I got uh, this very simple, actually, contraption here, which will allow me to do the following. So let's take a look at it. We got... Um, two different outputs here and that is uh, yeah i can actually build this uh, exactly the same way as over there so when will this torch here which i'm attaching this one turn on it will turn on when this redstone line is off that means if this torch is off and this is off that means that we actually need to have power on this level here so power this block here so that this torch gets off, but at the same time not power the next redstone block in order to have this uh, torch be lit up and this one turned off. That means we have to actually put only very few items in this hopper here. As you can see, if I've only got zero items in it, the torch is off. If I got one item in here, the torch turns on. If I got too many items in there, the torch turns off again. It has to be exactly a certain power level. And now the question is, how do I set it to a different power level than just this very low one? Well, I'm feeding in an override signal at the side into this comparator, which is in subtraction mode. You can actually see it from over here. We got the comparator in subtraction mode and the override signal comes from the chest here. So it is actually really simple. I'm just overriding or subtracting a certain amount of the power strength by setting the amount of shovels in here and that corresponds to a certain button you have to press and the conversion table over here tells you which how many items uh, will yeah trigger what kind of button and well at the end if you enter the right numbers uh, these lines will all turn off and this is pretty much just a big end gate and it will also trigger the re corresponding note blocks at the top here and this end gate will eventually just lead into uh, a door switch here which is yeah I just try to make it compact and that's why this looks a little bit 
uh, crumbed and it's not very uh, clear to see how, <laughs> but yeah, I was just trying to fit the door, um, wiring into as uh, small space as possible. There's no real magic behind, the, uh, behind it. But beside that, there's just one additional thing, and that is if you enter all five numbers and the uh, lock actually doesn't trigger, then there is an end, uh, end gate here which uh, checks, aha, we entered the fifth number and the door is, uh, and the code has been entered wrong. And then this triggers this uh, repeater here to turn off and there's actually a whole repeater chain going through the system over here. And this eventually hits the reset button. The reset button itself, that's what the only thing I haven't explained yet, so um, the this line over there will also go to the reset button uh, line here. It just, um, first of all, retracts all these pistons here which are at these memory cells so that means we will clear out all the signals from each memory cell and secondly it will also yeah it just turn off these repeaters here for a while so that the signal has time to travel through all of them and eventually turn off maybe you can see it that's um it turned off for a short moment here and after that we are feeding in a signal into the first um yeah digit again so that we can actually start entering a new number straight away and uh, you could also see that those pistons were retracting for a short moment um, refreshing all the memory cells. I can just try to hit it again and you can see that all those pistons uh, retracted one after another for a short moment. Uh, by the way, this design is actually infinitely extendable. If you wanted to, you could copy over the same section over and over again and have a, a combo lock where you have to enter 100 numbers. It doesn't necessarily make sense, but I designed it so that there are always repeaters or, better s or comparators at the different spots. You can't put too many buttons here. There's a limit of um, 14 buttons in the design at the moment, I believe. But uh, you could put as, as many uh, lamps as you want to. I decided to go for five because in that way it's uh, it looks best because we have just uh, a very regular setup with twice the amount of buttons as digits and therefore it looks very uh, yeah, very compact. And it's not necessary that you have f five, you could also do less or more as I said. Um, yeah, that's the mechanics on how this worked. And uh, as I said, if you want to try something out like this, I will also link a video from Cube Hamster. He made a different design, which is even a little bit more compact, but maybe easy, uh, more difficult to build up and also doesn't ha by far not have uh, that convenient of an um, item reset, or better say, um, key set method here with these chests in the back here in the conversion table. Um, but it's a uh, different design. I looked it up after I actually built this. So I was checking, hmm, probably someone else has made something like this. And yes, Cube Hamster made an even more compact version. And uh, it looks completely different. It has a button panel, which is actually not a line, but instead of uh, a three by three button panel. And I also think that this is yeah, it doesn't have indicator light, so it's just a different design, but check that out as well if you are interested in building something like this up and maybe you find a decent use for it or just want to have fun building a redstone project and this might be a medium um, difficulty redstone thing which has actually quite a cool purpose at the end and is rather cool, so um, have fun with it. I'm out for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.